British governor left. You know, at some point in time, this continent was ruled by the Europeans. So let's start with the transatlantic slave trade. For more than 300 years, they took the smartest people, the strongest people. Because for you to survive the conditions in the dungeons, for you to survive the ships, it meant that you had a strong immune system. It meant that you were the best of the best. And they carried the best of the best to the plantation farm because I believe that our ancestors over there invented and created a whole lot of things that they were never credited with what they, were in, what they invented. And I know very well that weaving we taught the Europeans how to grow rice in one of the Carolinas because they especially took Africans from rice growing areas like, you know, Sierra Leone, Senegal, yes. South Carolina. Exactly. Exactly. So that is what actually happened. So the best of the best was taken out. So after taking the best of the best out of this continent, they now realize that there is more to this continent. This continent has more than a half of the world's natural resources. So I always say this, Africa can do without the world, but the world can never do without Africa. Trust me, if Africa says today that it's no longer moving any resource, let's give the world 50 to 100 years, the world will come to a stand still. You know, because for you to build your skyscrapers in, in America, Europe and all that, China, for you to build your submarines, ships, fighter jets, airplanes, you need certain essential items from Africa. You need manganese and bauxite. Because out of manganese, you get iron. Out of bauxite, you get aluminum. And Africa produces more than a half of that in the world. And even for the world to eat chocolate without Africa, nobody's going to eat chocolate. Talking about you know, the batteries we have in our phones, <coughs> laptops, the gadgets, lithium, Africa produces it. So they started fighting among themselves to have a piece of this continent. Like what happened in, in the Congo between France and Belgium. So now the Europeans, have to sit down on a table and share Africa among themselves. In our history books, we call it the Scramble for Africa or the Berlin Conference. So 1884, 1885, on the table in Germany, Berlin, without any African representative, Africa was shared. So it's basically like, okay, this piece was cut, a piece like Ghana was cut. Ghana, England, take it. A piece like Cote d'Ivoire, France, a piece like Togo for Germany. So it basically says that, okay, France or Germany or whatever, you can loot resources from angle A to B. Don't go beyond B, because your brother is also looting. If you go there, it's gonna cause conflict. And if there's conflict, conflict here, there's conflict in Europe. We don't want none of that. And also, did you know that America was on the table when Africa was shared? Okay, definitely. Yes, so America was on the table. America had a peace. America had Liberia. But the thing is, it would have been bad for America to use Liberia as a colony. Because now America talks about freedom, democracy. 
Uh, so now they have to use Liberia as a free state for former enslaved Africans in the United States who wish to return to Africa. Ethiopia was also not colonized. So on the table, Ethiopia was for Italy or Italy. Now, okay, so you are Ethiopia and Italy. I'm here to rule over you. And you say, no, you can't rule over me. I've been a sovereign nation centuries ago. So now you kick me out. Yes, the Ethiopians kicked out the Italians. So two countries in Africa was never colonized. Liberia and Ethiopia. The rest were all colonized. So Ghana became a British colony. And unfortunately, this is where the governor lived. This was a sitting room. So again, this building served as the seat of government. Cape Coast served as Ghana's first capital city. And on 19th March 1877, the British removed the capital from Cape Coast to Accra. And on 6th March 1957, Ghana became the first black country in Africa to gain its independence from a colonizer. So Ghana was actually a shining example to so many African countries. Because on the eve of independence, our president, or the greatest Pan-Africanist that ever lived, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. mentioned that the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked to the total liberation of every black man everywhere. So Nkrumah did not rest. He wanted Africans home and Africans at the diaspora united. So no wonder he traveled to America, met with um, Martin Luther King, um, uh, Malcolm X, and the others, just to bring them. He brought W.B. Du Bois home. But somebody realized that what he was doing was so powerful that if care is not taken, they're going to be at the loose inside. Because now, if Africans home and Africans at the diaspora unite, then it is massive. Because we unite our resources together. So somebody saw what he was about to do. And these guys overthrew the program. You know, we know who did that. We know, we know the, the countries that took the program. But they always make it sound like it's Ghanaians who took, but you know, somebody orchestrated the whole thing. The same with Patrice Gulumba, Secretary, Olympio, um, Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Gaddafi? What, what, what do you normally hear about Gaddafi? When, he was powerful and kept his you country see? in line. I heard he was a man. He kept his country in you line see? and we messed with him and killed him. You see, it's a propaganda all the time. They will make you look you know, devilish. I know what happened. Yeah, so let us see how he wanted, he wanted to unite all of Africa yes. and he yes. wanted yes. gold for their oil and he wanted to establish one currency for all of Africa. And he was a, he was a promoter of the uh, United States of Africa. Exactly. Yeah, he wanted to unite all the Af countries in he Africa. He did something good. He, he did something good. He did something good they don't talk about. You see, for you to make calls in and out of Africa, your calls would have to go through Europe. So every year, we were paying Europeans $500 million. Yes, $500 million for using their telecommunication satellite. So Gaddafi was like, look, we can have our own satellite. Okay, I'm going to bring out $300 million. All the African countries put together 100 million. So yes, we had our own satellite. So that money was not going there. That money was staying here. Exactly. And also, you know, we have everything here. So if you want to buy our oil, our cocoa, come back and buy our gold. It was smart. It was a smart because now it weakens. It was, like, if that had happened, that would have weakened the dollar. That would have weakened the power, the euros, the yen, yeah. you know, everything. Yeah. Because okay. Africa supplies everything the world needs. So come to us, come and get gold here. We have a single currency. Change whatever currency you have into our currency and buy our stuff. So that was one of the main reasons why they killed Gaddafi. Because he was, he was bound to make that happen. Rest in power. I shall. All right, so let's go through the bedroom and then we visit the field.